the cast of the film is insane. Obviously, Lakeith as Clarence. You got R.J. Tyler again from The Heart of They Fall. Tiana Taylor. Alfre Woodard. Alfre Woodard. David Yellowo, Omar Sy, Anna Diop. Incredible people. When casting this film, talk to me about that, that process and the actors. Were they in mind as you were writing these people? I know, I know that I know that Lakeith was, because I, I heard you say, you know, the harder they fall, that's when you really started learning this. But as far as Lakeith and others, how did the casting process come about for this project? It was pretty much, you know, <clears throat> firstly, I needed Clarence, right? Yeah. And when I, was, when I was casting for The Harder They Fall, I remember taking a quick break and, and I was in Mexico and a, and a call with um, Lakeith Stanfield was arranged for the character of Je- Cherokee Bill. And when we were talking, he had to put down the phone because he got a call from his cousin and he looked really worried. And he was like, yo, man, I got to put down the phone. Somebody, I got to call you back in 15. Somebody probably got shot in the hood. And, and he went through all of these um, scenarios that possibly could happen because he felt bad putting the phone down. I was like, no, no, we're from the same place. It's all good. Take the call. But when he went through those scenarios, he went through like these different characters and different emotions. And I called my sister Tanya immediately. I went, Tan, 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 I got Clarence. She went, what? I found Clarence, Tanya. It's Lakeith Stanfield. And I knew we had our Clarence. And I I also knew if if he said no, then I would have made another movie until he said yes. Like Clarence did not work without Lakeith. So upon us having Clarence, you could, you could breathe, right? You could breathe when you have your, when you have your, um, uh, lead, right? When you have your lead, um, actor, your lead character cast and you can kind of let the, now you can let the, um, story tell itself. You can cast around that character and, and kind of cast off him. And every and it just makes everything, um, you know, everything easier and everything fluid. Mm. And so, and so that was it. And you know, me and Jay are, are kind of fortunate in that. You know, I'm a firm believer of great artists um, want to make great art. Mm. And me and Jay will sit sit with particular people, and or Jay would speak to a person, explain as you, as you see, explain his perspective. I'll explain my perspective, and that's how it was with the harder they fall, right? And, and, you know, we've been fortunate in, in being able to cast, um, you know, great ensembles and, and the, the book clouds. And I loved it. And I just loved it. Uh, and, and then on top of that, you know, RJ's and, um, um, the keeps just it's just they're just magic on screen together. Yeah. You know, they were adversaries and harder they fall. And now they, you know, you know, now they partners in this one and it just, that it's just magic. You know, absolutely. And all again, so many great people, so many great people from this. Again, from the soundtrack to the to the film, I see like I see St. John's down there somewhere. He's in. Yeah, the film. He's, he's he's here. Actually, he's, he's on stage. St. John. Yeah. Hello. Yeah, he, what's up, gang? What's up? Say, say hey, what's just talk. What, what's this? I, I'm gonna I'm gonna say something real quick, right? Saint, like everyone in the film, you're gonna see has like a. Um, almost like a West African um, accent. Like, it's almost like, what did, what did ancient Jerusalem sound like? So we kind of created our own ancient, you know, we kind of created our own ancient dialect. Jerusalem and dialect. And Saint was the one, you know, I, had to, I had to put Saint John in it because I've known him for years and I know he can act. Like, he'll be with me and when I'm casting and he'll read particular things even when I was doing um, The Harder They Fall. Me and Saint go way back, and 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 I knew I just I just know Saint John is is that dope, and he came to my house. He came to my house, and he was ready to do like a, a kind of West African type accent. We're not gonna yeah. we're not gonna uh, gonna give away his character, but he is the only person in the film that keeps his native Guyanese accent mm. right. And because every time he every time he did it, and every time he does it. I just smile, and it brings a smile to my face when I'm watching. It'll bring a smile to your face when you um, watch it. But Saint, you can speak to what the process was like of you starring in your first film and and getting into character and all of that. 
I mean, first of all, it's, it's wild being in my first film. It's wild watching you do this again and again and again and again, mm -hmm. right? Not out of disbelief, just as wild watching people respond to it. Because these are films you talk to me about and things that you just said. And I'd be in the living room and you'd be like, yo, so the movie's going to be like this and it's going to be called this. And I know what the third movie's about to be. So for you to call me, because we've been friends for so long, for you to be like, all right, cool, I need you in a movie. And I didn't know which one you were talking about or what you were filming or what was happening. But I was like, of course, you're my brother. I'll be there. And the fact that you ain't let me see the script until the night before, that's nuts. The night before. <laughs> <laughs> that's nuts. I'm in Matera, Italy. I'd never been to Matera. I don't like I've been to Italy a couple of times, but I don't know what this place is. The place looks like a time that Jesus lived in. I land. Everything is in caves. And I'm like, yo, what? A OK, James wants you to you got a role in a movie but i'm like people are asking me what the role is i'm like i don't know biggs is talking to me i'm like bro i don't know i'm about to go meet him <laughs> in the living room right now and i'm shooting that <laughs> morning so i i get to his his cave he got like a duplex cave in, <laughs> in matera italy it was kind of swagged out it was swagged out <laughs> nah, it was lit and we start talking about the movie and i'm watching i'm reading the script for the very very first time but i trust james is brilliant so it's easy to just go along with it and with working through whatever the accent's going to be. And he's like, yo, what do you think about using your Guyanese accent? I'm like, oh, that one, let me go. So, mm. It's so natural to mm. me. And it, it, it also speaks to the confidence that he had in you as well. Like you, you, you had trust in him to, you know, to pull that off in, in 24 hours, if that, and he had trust to just show you the day before, which is, which mm. is a beautiful, again, magic. Yeah. Magic. magic. I think, I mean, it's, yeah. it's crazy, I think, but, but, Shout out Biggs, too. Biggs, Biggs out there, too. I've seen Biggs over there somewhere. I have to ask yeah, you. Yeah, shout out you, to Biggs. You, you, are on the, the, you were on the set. I've seen the clips, James, that you've posted of the, the, the music that you're playing in between scenes and, and the, the, the JV records you're playing in between scenes to get everybody hyped. But, St. John, talk to me about what it was like being on that set. The, day, the days you were there, what was it like, the camaraderie with the cast? such a dope cast to learn from as well. What was it like on set working with James and the cast and what was the energy like? It was the blackest group of people I'd ever seen in my whole life. It was <laughs> like a G. It was, it was like a G. It was amazing. It felt like just being around a bunch of family and friends and first cousins and third cousins. And it was really mm. peaceful too. Right. So the, the way it's, I've never really been on a movie set, but I've been in on a thousand video sets Right. And the production, you could tell that the leadership was clear. Like mm. people weren't flustered, frustrated. You didn't hear disgruntled things happening on the side in the background. Mm -hmm. There was a looming energy that everybody was there to do something great. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. And it, it felt remarkably consistent from the time I'm in the dressing room, from the hotel, going to the set and getting on the set. It was the same thing. Now, everyone's dressed in garb from like the dressing from this time period so you mm. absorb you absorb immediately into this time period that you'd only read in text or you'd only seen on television with, with faces that don't look like yours and something about this one felt like this is how it probably really happened mm. something felt completely mm -hmm. organic and sincerely genuine now, my experience being on set this is my first time being in a movie I ain't gonna, I'm gonna keep it tall I'm shook I'm all types of right? <laughs> but I know I'm with family, so the fear is only going to be met with me having the opportunity to, to deliver or to fail. But when you fail in front of family, it just gives you an opportunity to be great. So James has this uncanny belief and this uncanny ability to see things long before they materialize. Mm -hmm. This ain't the first time you've put me in a place <laughs> that I, I hadn't walked to on my own two feet. Remember, James, you'd sent, you sent Roses to Jay before Roses came out. Yeah, absolutely. Years ago. Years ago. Uh, as soon as you played me <clears throat> the music you were working on. And testament to, testament to Jay, right? You played me Roses. The, as I was listening to it, I sent it, I sent it to Jay. Before the song was finished, and you didn't know I sent it to him. Before the song was finished, Jay had already responded. Let's get him, <laughs> right? I showed you. I, sh I showed you the the text message. He was like, "Is that? Is that? Is that hope? That's hope." Basically, let's get cooler than that. But I said that. 
right. You weren't you weren't you weren't that cool. You weren't that cool. <laughs> I stunned you. It was a stunner. It was a stunner. It's okay. It's okay. My assistant one time one time Jay called my phone and my assistant Amanda, she walked up to me and she said, She just had a shocked look on her face. I said, What's up? She went, Your phone's ringing. I said, Okay. Said, Who is it? She went, it's Jay-Z. I was like, what? <laughs> You're not meant to say Jay-Z like that. You're meant to say it's Jigger. You're like, it's Jay-Z. So it's okay to be shook the first time, you know what I mean? You get over no, it. It's I all was, right. I was, yeah, I was definitely shook when I got the call last night from the team. Everybody was like, no, can you do this? With, I said, with Jay, Jay-Z? Okay. You know what I mean, love? No, like, like, guys, says, uh, you make me feel good. This is fantastic. Okay. Can we do this like <laughs> three times a week? Yeah. You got we, we, yeah. we can do it a couple yeah. times, couple times. All right. <laughs> okay, before we wrap, let me get back to the film because that's why we're here talking about the film. But I want to say guys. something, Gia. I want to say something, Gia. Okay, to any ahead. create to any creatives, right? To any creatives, there's a there's a song, right? There's a song, a old um uh song by Alita Adams. It's called Rhythm of Life. <clears throat> and the first verse she says, Climbing every mountain. Always killing time. Uh, count the cost as days go by. Monday, I've got Friday on my mind. Why don't we make love? So when she says Monday, I've got Friday on my mind, right? That's a poignant line. Monday, I've got Friday on my mind. What she's saying is that we always miss the moment. We're talking about, we're always talking about the plan, the destination, the destination when life isn't about the destination life isn't about the movie we make life is about the making of it life is about the journey the entire like the entirety of life is about the journey right so i always say the movie we make is for the audience the making of the film is for us that's why you get directors that are stressed on set and i never understand why saint will tell you when i arrive on set one i play music gia or the time if there's a five minute break we're blasting off when i arrive on set i literally dap up every single human being working on that set whether they're in catering whether it's health and safety whether it's security i dap up every single person that walks past me and hug them and hug them and hug them make them all feel appreciated make them all feel seen because it's the moment right it's the moment you're going through that is actually life like in a minute this space is going to be done Right, uh, and we'll be like, oh, that was in that was in the past. Whereas right now, it's Saint John, it's James Samuel, it's Gia Peppers, it's Jay Z, it's all of us, and everyone else on this experiencing this beautiful moment in time. We're talking about the magic we had making the music, but we also have to speak about the magic we're having right now, just talking to each other. And everyone just here listening, and that's what that's what when you're making an album, when you're writing a song, don't think about the destination think about it's the actual doing it that is the that is the thing and and obviously the book of clarence is the destination it's the wickedest dopest film you're gonna see it's it's amazing it's the first movie of its kind in 136 years but it's also for all filmmakers listening all budding filmmakers and music video directors and creatives it's also about the journey the actual making of it make sure everyone around you is having the time of their of their lives while you're while you're doing it and you'll and you'll get people that want to work with you again and again and again mm, that's that's a good sermon sir that was real good I, I really like how you said that the the one of the things that you also say is don't doubt don't what you say don't question your crazy or obey your crazy obey your crazy obey your crazy is the most important thing I, you know as you get older you, when you're a child you, you're th- you're t- told the sky's the limit think positive the older you get don't count your chickens before they hatch man which one is it obey your crazy <laughs> those people people will always try and sealing your destinations with their own limitation right jay has a line in shiny suit theory when he's talking to a shrink he says uh you must be off your rocket if you think you make it off the he, 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 i can't i can't remember remember the line but you're telling the shrink of your plans and he's telling you you're crazy right mm-hmm. You, you must be mixing something potent with your vodka. The, there you the, go. The, right? It's, it's, it's deep. So, so, but my point is, 
obey, you're crazy. As a creative, you're crazy will never lead you and steer you wrong. When you have these instincts, when you have these thoughts, me and Jay-Z took you to the Old West, now we took you to the New Testament. Never been done before in the history of, in the history of cinema. Both films, right? We've seen a black cowboy before, but not in a way that it was in the, with the harder they fall. But with the Book of Clarence, you've never seen anything like this in 136 years of cinema, right? Yeah. Obey, obey, you're crazy because you're not actually crazy. It's the rest of the world that is. You know what I mean? Can you, can you imagine the two, the two uh, films we started with? Again, mm. black people in the old west. <laughs> mm. It's like, that's never going to work. It, that, that, that film on, uh, which was on Netflix was uh, viewed by 110 uh, um, so if you put that into you know box office numbers, it would it would have grossed a billion dollars. Wow, crazy! So it wasn't only just something that was great for us. It was a, it was a hit. It was a bona fide hit for, for Netflix. Yeah. That that film when in the beginning was like cowboy genre. You know, yeah. The, the no dudes, one watches they don't cowboys. Go over well, they, no one watches cowboys, and you know the things they tell you, like for to, years. To James Point. To keep a ceiling on your crazy, right? He said, "No, no, no. That those things doesn't, you know, that don't work." And my, my, um, you know, what I said. You remember what I said, James? Break it up. I was like, if we made, if we only made a cowboy film, we fail. Exactly. It's not. It's not just. A, it's not. It's not. A, it's not it's a not West. A cowboy film. It's, it, you know, it. The setting is the West, of course. Yes, that's the backdrop of what we're doing. But it's about these complex characters that went through this situation and this, you know, this story. We 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 are um, storytellers. We're lovers of story. We're storytellers. Yeah. We love story. The settings were going to be what the settings going to be. And yeah, sometimes they're difficult. We like to we like to, you know, we like to challenge the audience. People take the audience for granted. Like like the audience don't don't love nuanced characters. You know, almost like, that's why I never really like boy bands. They're like, this is the bad guy. This is the church guy. This is the soft guy. And like, that's it every day. Every day he's yeah. tough. Every day he's the, exactly. he's, he's the whatever. I don't want, I'm, I'm not interested. You know, like, you know, we explore like nuance and people, everyone's nuance, right? And, and the further you explore it, like, you know, someone to tell you that they love succession and all these other characters. But um, when it comes to us, it's, it's limited in scope as far as like having nuance to feelings and emotions. And, you know, Clarence is not tough, but you put him in with rappers, he gave him a run for his money. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, he's like, wait, how can that same person who's running from, you know, uh, Samson get in there and, and hold his own against that? Yeah, there's always the guy in the hood who's not a tough guy, he's not a bully, but you don't play with him. Mm-hmm. I tell you, and they'll tell you, don't play with him. He got those hands. I'm telling you right now, he's not out here with us. He ain't, he ain't, he ain't thugging every day. He ain't on the corner, but he's a very principled guy. And if you play with him, you are gonna learn. Yeah. Um, mm. You know, just the nuance and, and and character. So we we again, we're storytellers, and and storytellers. you know, the settings for us, the settings for us is just an opportunity to. Uh, again back to that word to reimagine us and reintroduce us to our rightful place it's our rightful place we were in the old west Absolutely. cowboy was created as a derogatory term for us <laughs> exactly but we made it look so good we made it look so good that now everyone wants to be cowboys yeah they took same it back. with this same with this you know egypt you know these this ain't me this is the go read this you know egypt libya all that is in africa it, we made it look so good that it's now in the Middle East. Exactly. We made it look so good <laughs> that now the <laughs> scientists <clears throat> who've told us for years aliens do not exist, now they're saying aliens built the pyramids. You know what I mean? Like, we made it look, we made it look that good. And, and so, and, and again, to Jay's point, we're storytellers. St. John has a song called Reflex, right? It's my favourite song he's done. I will blast it out every day. When he rapped, I made him perform it for the... For the um, uh, for the cast, right, and for the, for the crew, and the story. That song is a story. It's, a, it's one of the first songs he ever played me, right? When he just recorded it, it was a demo, and that's a story. And it, it, when I listen to Reflex, it's like the story of my life. And when you think about stories, right, there are 
actually no genres. Like you said, there's no genres of music. There are technically no genres of film. For over a decade, they told me and Jay, people don't watch Westerns. When me and Jay were putting together The Heart of They Fall, Netflix were sending DVDs to your house. They weren't like the Netflix that Netflix um, um, came. They didn't even exist. It's almost like the universe needed Netflix to exist, needed me and Jay to be in a particular place before it gave us um, the harder they fall and the ability to execute it to the in the fashion that we needed to execute it. And what we were telling people is, if you take, say, Menace to Society, right, and you take that exact story, move them back 120 years, it's a Western. If you take that exact story, move them back 2,000 years, you're in the Bible days. There are actually no... A genre, a, a lot of times, is the geographical the geographical time and space it's put in. But if you move the time and space, the genres change. Really, what we, we're attracted to is stories, right? And we're, and we're, we're storytellers, and, and the, which, which is why the Book of Clarence, man, again... It's just an amazing story, man. It's an ama- It's a story of us. It's a story of you, Gia, of me, of everyone on this on this um, spaces. You know what I mean? Where's Caleb? Oh, hello. Hi, Caleb. Hey, hey, how's everyone doing? Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm just feeding my dogs. I'm just listening to this amazing conversation being told, being said. But yeah. Huh. You have been doing, you've been doing incredible work and this movie is no different. What was it like on the set? What was it like working with James? Take me through your experience. It changed my life, honestly. It was magical. Um, I'd say I, I grew up being in Italy. Um, being Growing up in the business, I'm usually having my like parents around traveling with me and this set was my first time doing it on my own and just being able to learn from people that you know like Lakeith growing up watching him and RJ and everyone else and then getting to meet James and work with him and learning his mind and understanding him and uh, he's been a great mentor from you know my first zoom call with him to even now uh like my first zoom call with him like I can back with sing John was saying like he didn't even, I didn't even read the script. He was just like, I want you to be in it. I was a fan of The Heart of They Fall. He's like, I want you to be in uh, my next film. I'm like, bet, whatever you need me to do, I'm down. So, it, uh, you know, I'm just happy that I'm able to have the opportunity and um, just be a part of this. Sweet. I think Omar, Omar's here too, uh, James. Omar, yeah, yeah. I see Omar. Omar, are you here? You, you guys would hear me speak fluent French if Omar, because people don't know I speak fluent French, Jay. They don't know. You know, they think I just speak one language. But if Omar, Omar, if you request to speak, my brother, I'll show the, I'll show the world how I speak fluent French. I, just, I, I don't even know. Also, also, great job, Caleb, and congratulations, man. To you. Yeah. Oh, man, yeah, yes. It. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. And thank you, Caleb, man. You're amazing. Yeah, you are amazing in this film. I'm not piggybacking off what Jay said. I honestly believe that. <laughs> no, I appreciate that. Opportunity. Thank you, guys. Yeah, absolutely. Omar, Omar, could you request to speak? I we got Lupin, Lupin in the house. <laughs> Let me say so. When, when Omar came to, Omar has a dog called Tato, right? But Omar never says Tato. He goes Tato. His voice is deep, like Darth Vader. Tato, and you hear that ring out over, um, over Matera, over Italy, and you see the staff, the Staffordshire Terrier, run up to you, right, and. When, when Omar first came, because my mum loves Lupin, the show that Omar's on, right? He came up to me in the, in the town school. I said, Mummy, ma, I caught a face on my mum. I said, Mummy, I've been arrested, Mummy. I've been arrested. My mum said, what? Jeez, you love of my soul. Let me to my bosom fly. <laughs> what? See how I brought that back? See, I'm clever, guys. <laughs> and then, uh, and then, and then uh, she was like, what happened? What happened? I said, I don't know, Mummy, but it's going to be Okay someone's on the case. I've got a detective on the case. She said, who? And I put a phone on. I said, oh, Lupin. My. And you should have seen my mom's face. Oh, Lupin. She loves a Lupin. I think Omar's trying to request to speak, but he probably, he probably can't. Um, I, I uh, asked him to come up. Let me see. Omar, if you uh, request, you should be able to speak. 
That's, we, oh, you have another question we could go to in, in the meantime? Yes, the meantime? I do. Okay, yeah. so for for those of us who are uh, watching this film and taking a, taking us through this journey, uh, the the background, the backdrop, Italy is is th- this part of Italy still looks like what we imagine a Jerusalem uh, looked like in that time. Talk to me about the importance of the location, how you were able to get those incredible action scenes that we see in the film, and the cinematography mm. is incredible. So the ways that you were able to make that camera dance on those times when you know Tiana is is on on the, yeah. the horses, like talk to me about that. Well, one of my favorite action movies is oh here he is. Oh, oh, here he is. Oh. Hello, Omar, mon frère. Oh, mon frère. I'm sorry. I'm so Le bad. With that. I'm so bad with it. I'm sorry. How are you guys? It's okay. It's okay. We're fine. We're fine. Oh my, I'm going to answer this question quick, and then you and me, we are going to speak French. Okay. To the, to the they're going to hear, they're going to hear how we speak French. What's it? Okay, so so first, Asian guy, and um, and that was shot by a guy called Rob Hardy, right? So I wanted him to be my DP for this film because I knew I wanted wanted some high octane action sequences, and then we went to a place called Matera in Italy as as um. Uh, some will say it's like it's the f- it's the fourth oldest inhabited city in the world, right? It's thousands of years old. The caves are there from when they they were living in caves. It's still there, and so we were um, we 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 were there, and you I could do it in material. I could do an aerial three sixty shot, right? Turn the camera right around from the sky and still be in ancient Jerusalem. Still have that feel. So I knew when I saw that town, Mel Gibson shot Passion of the Christ there, right? Um, I knew when I saw that town, if I populate it with black people and have black people descend on this town, we are going to, it's going to look like absolute, pure, unadulterated magic. And that's what we did. We, we all went to that town. And, and my stunt coordinator for the chariot races is a man called Phil Nielsen. So you have to get the top people in the in the. Because he did this, all the stunts for Gladiator, for the original Gladiator. And I knew I wanted like a super dope chariot race with Lakeith Stanfield, RJ Kyler, um, Tiana Taylor, who's just magic in the movie. Mm-hmm. And, you know, when you put all those elements together, Matera, Rob Hardy, the DP, Phil Nielsen, the, um, the stunt coordinator, your amazing cast to pull up. Off and, and then you just have you have what became one of my favorite scenes in the movie yeah tiana deserves all the flowers for the the depth that she brought to that character i'm not going to give it away but y'all, y'all tiana going yeah she did <laughs> amazing work from tiana taylor and the whole cast and speaking of we got omar here who plays barabbas i was blown away by your performance talk to me about what it was like to bring this character to life uh, and get the call that you were going to be a part of this film. Well, thank you. Thank you. First of all, thank you very much for that. Um, I, don't, I don't know what to say. It was, it was, it was a very a specific adventure for me to be in a movie like that, work uh, with with someone with like, like James. You know, it's he's he's a he's a he's he's he's, a, he's of course um, an amazing director, but he's like more like a very complex and and um, um, very um, come like a whole artist itself. You know the way he sees and thinks things are very uh, um, specific, and I love being a part of something um very precise like like he likes he like he likes to do so for Barabas, he has like a, a very um um how can i say that sorry but I, i'm i'm looking for my words because i want to be precise um it's okay um, so he he knew exactly what he wanted for Barabas, but at the same time it gives you the space to express yourself that's 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 how you you recognize like artists because they they want to share, say this thing the way you want to say do you want to say it. So so for Barbas it was very, very cool because we could we could have 
the one he wanted and, and, and mine too. So we wanted someone um, who was seeking from freedom and at the same time some, someone who was with um, Clarence without face at the beginning, but I'm sorry, I'm, I'm not <laughs> by no, you're, you, no, you're, you're doing no, right now. Yeah, you're doing no, wrong. Okay, okay, we'll so, so, so someone looking for faith, but Barabbas believed in God, and he has like, he was following um, Clarence with, with someone, but because when we talk about the movie, it was not about religion, but more about faith, and 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 and, and, and I know James has that, and 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 I do. And and as an artist, we all you know believe in something. So it was more about 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 that, and it was a a good opportunity to talk about all of that in the movie. You know, um, so mm -hmm. I was very uh, proud and excited to do a, to do a, to do something like that. Beautiful. I don't know if you did. I'm sorry. No, it was great. Okay. No, it was a great line. And it was a great line. You recognize an artist because they like to share. That's how you recognize an artist. Yeah. Beautiful line. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. exactly. And, yeah. and and I didn't have to speak French. You know what I mean? Because if I'm going to French. No, no, no. I, yeah. I did speak in English, so now you have to speak French. <laughs> okay. You, 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 want me to, you, you want me to speak French? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> the world ain't ready. The world ain't ready right now. That's for, that's for, the, that's for the sequel. That's for the sequel. <laughs> for the sequel. <laughs> now, and also, hey, hey, guys. And also, sorry, sorry. Sorry, so I just wanted to, to say, because I didn't have the time to, to really talk about that too, but the fact that Jay-Z is involved, you know, I know you hear uh, Jay, so I'm... Um, um, and it was it was also something you know very important for 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 me because uh, the the fact that he was involved you know you, it was very encouraging and you know you can you cannot you can't go wrong when he's around you know you know you're doing something something good and the fact he's he's around it gave us I think I'm, I'm gonna talk for everyone because I think we they all be agree on uh, with me on that that it gives you something more to go, you know. There's, of course, um, James gives it, 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 the, the, the facts he wants to share. It gives the, the energy to, to move forward and to follow him everywhere. That was something powerful that, that, that James had. But, but also, like, the fact Jesse was here, that gave us a little bit more to go, to go forward and to, to give the best we could. So I'm very mm -hmm. proud to be a part of that and to be around all of you guys. I appreciate that, man. Thank you. Same, same, Omar. It's an honor, it's an honor working with you guys.